domestic violence, breaking the silence, it's not a topic of everyday conversation, but today we're going to talk about it. Domestic abuse impacts everyone. It doesn't matter what color you are or how much money you have. On average, nearly 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner in the United States. One woman shares her story about a relationship 20 years ago that almost ended her life. Let's start from the very beginning. What was your relationship like when you met your boyfriend? We met out one night. It was fun. Um, we hung out. We moved in together relatively quickly. So when did your relationship change? There was impatience. There was jealousy, those sorts of things. So I can't really remember necessarily the first time that he hit me. Was there anything that made you go, aha, uh -huh, something's wrong, before he even hit you? Was he like mentally abusive too? Just lots of put downs, lots of um, jealousy, questioning where I went or what I did, questioning who I was. Did you personally just try to hide it or what, yes. what did you do to hide it? Not go to work if I would have bruises. A lot of times he hit it in the sense of he wouldn't necessarily hit me about my head or face. My family didn't know I was in this relationship. I didn't want law school to know. I didn't want my work to know. I did leave um, at one point when I was studying for the bar exam. I left and moved in with my sister for a while. So I thought about leaving then, but I ultimately went back. You know, there's lots of threats if I didn't come back, how I would be destroyed or how I'd be hurt. I graduated from law school then in 2003 and got a job in Stearns County. Uh, he moved up there with me, um, and it was at that point um, things escalated before that, and things really escalated once we moved up there. I had told my friend, let's see, probably a couple months before that, that if I didn't show up for work that she should call um, and get somebody there because something bad had probably happened. I often would leave and go stay in my office because uh, I could get in after hours. I had a bag packed there. I knew he couldn't get in there. So I went back to my apartment. He was asleep then on the couch, and then it would have been the next morning. He woke up, came into the room, and I just thought he was going to go to sleep, and he didn't. Um, at that point, he beat me for about two and a half hours with hands, um, objects, strangled me, bound me, um, blindfolded me. I was beaten really to the point of being unrecognizable, even to myself. You know, I tried to sound like everything was fine. Um, yep. And she said, are you okay? And I said, nope. And then it was probably, I don't know, less than 10 minutes later that there was detectives then knocking at my door. He didn't stop beating me then. Um, there was still belts. Um, there was a studded belt that he beat me with. Um, and then he ultimately answered the door with a belt in his hand. If they hadn't showed up, what do you think would have happened? To oh, I wouldn't be sitting here. He wouldn't have stopped. I know he wouldn't have stopped. Oh, I had a severe concussion, um, ruptured eardrum, and then just severe bruising. Um, took a long time to, for the bruising to heal. You know, I had kept this really big secret for many, many years, and now it really could have easily been front page news. I was prosecuting domestic violence cases at that time, and now all of a sudden I'm a victim of domestic violence. My office had no idea that I was living in that circumstance until my colleague, of course, told them. The healing of my face and my bruises was infinitely easier than the healing of my mind and my spirit. Um, that took more time, so I sought out um, therapy and dealt with um, the impact of trauma that I had. I choose to stand in my story, own it as who I am and um, part of where I'm going. Heidi's boyfriend at the time served six months in jail. Meanwhile, Heidi has moved on with her life. She continues to practice law and is now with the Hennepin County Attorney's Office. She shares her story in hopes of helping others to heal. 